Hey everyone! Boar Mastery, world and land, amazing to have you here. All right, so, quick mic check, one, two, you hear me? Cool. Let me know in the comments below where you're from, what you're doing. Okay, I want to talk to you about how to survive and thrive in partnership dancing. This is a big subject, but I'm going to make it very simple to still it down to two major things. If you want to survive and thrive in your partnership dancing, Stick with me. Let's talk this one out really quickly. First of all, you are not going to extract the best from your partner by yelling at them and telling them what to do every time you're on the floor. <gasps> That's right. I said it. You cannot boss your partner into good dancing. It's just not going to happen. Good try. I mean, I tried. I tried it all the time. Let me, let me open the conversation here by sharing with you something really important. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? I am a deeply flawed human being. All right? I am not perfect. I was a dragon. My partner, my wife, the love of my life, Allison. 20 plus years of dancing together. Oh yeah, it started off good. Honeymoon period was amazing, right? Like the honeymoon period lasted for like a year or two with us. It was a, oh, oh. I was like, it, it, like we had this passion, this burning passion. Never let your passion burn out from dancing. You'll hate it. You'll end up resenting each other. You'll quit and never step back on the floor. Anyways, so we love dancing and it was our thing. And then we just gave up our life to pursue this to the highest level that we could take it. But I learned something along the way. In this quest to be the best, like your own personal best, because I don't believe in that. Look, I love competition and all that jazz, but at the end of the day, it's your personal best that matters, right? Am I right? Let me know, right? Like it's your very own personal best that you want to produce at any one point. And so to do that, though, are you ready for the secret? You need a partner. Like, so in partnership dancing... You need someone to dance with. And I'm going to exemplify this in another way uh, using a world professional dancer. So there's a gentleman in the world. I respect this guy. I think he's one of the best Latin dancers of all time. Slavic Kerkulevi. And so mate, this guy, YouTube him, man. Amazing dancer, right? One of my idols of dancing, okay? You can be the best in the world, but you will not be the best in the world if you cannot retain a partnership. And he could have been many times. He went through all the best girls, but couldn't hold a partner. Why? Attitude, right? His attitude. And I don't know him personally, so I can't say personally. I can't psychologically diagnose him. But all I know is from watching videos of him and how he's interacted with his partners and from interviews and what he said and some of his regrets. Keeping your partner is the most important thing. Now, how do we do that? How do we do that? We've got to make sure we don't yell and tell. But listen, if you're committed to dancing, if you want to be like the best you can be, if you've got high dance sport aspirations and you're in the studio a lot, you're going to find that arguments are, start, are going to come fast. They're going to come quickly. You're going to start to nitpick over stuff that you didn't in the beginning. And that's what happened to us. We went on this bell curve of joy and enthusiasm and passion. And then it turned and it started to get bitter and resentful and we started to just like nitpick. And I, I believe part of this is the curse of knowledge. You start to know too much and then guess what happens? You start, to, you start to know too much and therefore you start to pick on each other too much. And so here's what you need to do and stick with me because I'll give, I'll give an outcome that worked best for our personal relationship just as much as our dance relationship. But I've got to tell you, this is difficult. And it's a difficult thing to do, but you need a communication model. And let's talk about that a little bit. And let, let me know what you do. What, what do you do? Hey, like Maria, Julie, uh, Miller, Joan, Joyce, like Diane. Hello, everyone. Like, great to have you here. A communication model is the most important thing. So like, I mean, look, think about it like this. The arguments primarily in dancing come in, in all manner of speaking, but they primarily come when you start correcting each other, right? and correcting each other too much. So I made videos on this in the past, but essentially you've got to move away from coaching a partner, your partner and teaching your partner into a partnership, which is dynamic, which means that it is, it is ongoing and evergreen. There's two people dancing as one, which means your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions need to line up as a partnership, right? So you come in from a day of work, you're stressed out, your mind's like frazzled, you ha and you haven't warmed up, and you come in and take hold, and then you expect the best dancing. <laughs> you're right. And then all of a sudden, your partner doesn't live up to your expectations? Who the fuck are you? No offense, but like, come on. You, you know, even if you're the best in the world, you're going to make mistakes. And, and you're still a human, right? Like, we're all human. So it's like, you, you have to set up a communication model and a way, a way that will bring the best out of yourself and your partner. And so part of this ability is to navigate 
the terrain of being a human together, being, being in a partnership together, and to recognize, A, we have a problem because we are now arguing more than we are improving, and also our results are stagnating, meaning we're not getting better, we're, or, or we're in a decline, we're actually getting worse now. And, and the reason for that is you can't look, you can't look at your partner and go, <clears throat> you're the reason. Because here's, here's something that, and thank you for staying with me on this, here's something that I found within partnerships just generally in life that start to show a decline in the relationship, which means it's going to be on the outs, right? Like, so if you're afraid of losing your partner, if you're afraid of losing your partner in life, listen to this. Accusatory. If you're accusatory towards your partner, what do you think will happen? They're going to get defensive. They're going to start looking at you like, <clears throat> okay, I'll give you an example. You're pushing me off balance. You're pulling me off balance. You ever heard that one? You're not dancing with me. Why don't you lead me better? Why don't you follow me? Right? Does this sound like familiar, right? I know what that's like because I was that guy and, and you know, I'm fighting not to be that guy, right? It's really easy to, 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 to push, pull, and blame. But at the end of the day, you are responsible for your own dancing. Your balance has to be world class. Your technique has to be on point. Your musicality, your timing, your, your everything, you and also your partners. And then when you come together, the difficulty is making that work synergistically to the music, right? And so it's very easy to go, you're pulling me off balance because I'm so great, right? Like I'm amazing, you know? So clearly it's you, clearly it's you, right? So because of that attitude, you have a problem, you have a block and it becomes accusatory. Now, let me ask you this, guys, okay? So this is for you, Joyce, this is for you, Joan, everyone watching, Katie, Kate. If, if I come in and say to you and start blaming you and being accusatory in my manner, it's like, you're making me go off time, you are going to get defensive, right? If I say to you, like, we dance badly at that comp because you didn't warm up, right? You didn't do this, you didn't do that. Now, whilst that may be true, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that that's not true, right? What, what I'm saying is the way it's being delivered, the, the communication model, what's it doing? It's blaming, right? It's directly spearing arrows, venom at your partner, what do you think that's going to do to them? Do you reckon that incites motivation? It's psychology 101. Like, think about it. So we need to elicit the best out of each other, right? If we're in a partnership and if you want the partnership to succeed and if you want it to get better. That's only if. If you want to be crap and mundane and mediocre and just have a terrible time on the floor, don't watch this video, right? <laughs> so, uh, by the way, if you would like to uh, sideways wink at, like, your partner without having to, like, tell them directly, just tag them in the video and be like, oh, by the way, you should watch this, all right? But the communication model, I'm being dead serious on this. I did this with Alison. I would sit down and say, look, I'm being a dick. And I mean that. I'm being, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'd have to, I'd have to apologize for my behavior sometimes because I would just be so, I'm so passionate, you know? I'd, but my passion can tilt over into to borderline, like, just being an asshole. And so I'd have to say, look, I'm so sorry we got to do something better because it would, her defenses would kick up because I would blame her and get accusatory about things not working sometimes, not all the time, just sometimes. She would get defensive, fight, flight, and fear kicks in, and she would start then blaming me, right, for, the, uh, for it not working too. And so that's a loop, and then we'd just get into this, and for an hour, we'd be discussing the chassis, the lock that didn't work, the timing that didn't work, and on it goes, right? And, you know, 40 minutes gone by, we wasted time again. We'd get annoyed by that and try and produce better results. That won't work. So on, on, a, on a very just fundamental level, if, if we can just approach the method of communication, so rather than saying, you're pulling me off balance, be like, I'm, being, I'm losing balance. Can we just try that again? How's that? Why don't you just accept responsibility and give it a shot for yourself, you know? Like, maybe just take stock and go, I'm, I'm not the best dancer in the world. And even if I was, I need to keep a partner to be the best. So it would do me well not to blame that person. So what would I do? All right, let's discuss what's not working and let's create a model. And here's one of the models I made uh, with Allison. We'd say, like, let's try it three times. It's going to be as simple as this. We'll try it three times without saying anything. <laughs> Could you imagine me? Could you imagine me not saying anything? I give that a shot, right? So I'm like, mm. all right, we're gonna do, let's do that step. We'll do the fall away. Here we go. We'll try three times without saying anything, 
All right, and now I'm, we take hold. I want to say something about the hold, right? I haven't even stepped. Take the first step. I'm like, oh my God. and then finish the step. I'm bleeding. My tongue is bleeding. My mouth is bleeding because of how much I want to talk, right? <laughs> my tongue is falling off. All right, let's try it again. Second time, no talking yet. Anyway, so we try it again. Bang. <laughs> I want to say so much right now. And I bet she does too, but I want to be first because I want to be right, yeah? And you know, do you want to be right or do you want to be good? <laughs> anyway. So the third time we try it, oh, boom, it does like offload, you know, like brrr, machine gun fire of like everything that's wrong. You know, curse of knowledge kicks in. I know too much, but you know what? Who the hell am I? But I think I know all the answers. And so, and then she'd get defensive and then, no, 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 you're doing this. You know what though? It turns out guys, guys, guess what? She was right, like in most instances. Ah, this one's more frustrating than anything. And so that's why a coach is so important. You need to listen to your coach. You need to have a coach that can adjudicate you, that can help you out. Anyway, so that, that is a basic communication model, three times. And eventually it started to work because I, I needed to be a bit more introspective. I'd start to think about why I was doing things wrong. I would start to then focus on warming up more effectively when I got in the studio. I would start to focus on my own footwork, my own balance. And I realized something. I realized something. I had to be damn good at my own dancing. Oh, right? What a revelation. Because then it, un it unlocked so much. It unlocked everything, really. Because at that point, I, st I, I, got a, I, I still had moments where I get into my dark side, and I really think that that's what's difficult in dancing, is you have moments in relationships where you just need to vent. You need to be like, the, I, things are wrong. We need to fix it but it's how you go about it, right? And so the way that you go about it is really the message of today. It's like, what's a better mode of communication we can have so we can survive what's already an extremely difficult art form? It's hard enough you dancing well, let alone putting someone and attaching them to you and doing it in time to music, right? So if we can get less accusatory, we're gonna get less arguments. If we can get less arguments, we can get better outcomes. It doesn't mean that you be quiet and you, you, you soften your real opinions or your real way of going about things. Your, your personality may, may be introverted and you have a lot of feelings that you don't express. You need to express those. You may be extroverted and you say too much. You need to shut up. You need to shut up and just learn to be quiet. And, 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 and so we need to know ourselves, right? And we need to be aware of these things. And we need to develop that beautiful communication model that actually stands the test of time. Because you can be the best dancer in the world, but if you don't have a partner, you ain't going anywhere. And that has been proven in time and history. And I know many examples personally, professionally, and just from watching, it's the best in the world from that happening. And you know what, guys? We can be better, right? All of us can be better. And this message is for me, right? Just as much as it is for you. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying, from what I see in my studio, I, I sometimes face palm myself. I'm like, come on, you could talk better to each other. You could be nicer to each other, right? So let's just be kind. Let's enjoy our dancing. And last thing, let me know what you think about this message. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear your opinions on what you do as a communication mode. What do you do when things get tough? What do you do to keep your partnership going if you've had a long existing partnership. Because I've learned a lot after it was two decades of dancing with the love of my life and my beautiful wife and running a dance studio and having a family together. A communication mode is so important. You won't be perfect in it, but my God, if you're aware of it, it changes the game. So let me know what you do. Thank you for being here. Thank you for staying with me and watching this. It's wonderful to have you all. I'll see you in the next lesson, next episode. BoraMastery.tv, everyone, for free training. And I'll see you in the next one.